I'd like to welcome you to the BSE America location here in Charlotte, North Carolina. I'm Pete Hauser. We're here with a great partner, Braxton Bragg. We went ahead and we are doing a complete list as far as what materials you need to properly set your tools. We we're also going to go ahead and find exactly how you take those measurements, how you upload those into the software on both the CAM software and the CNC itself. Then we're going to go ahead and we're going to start making a footprint. With that footprint, it's going to show us how we have to adjust those tools up or down. And we're also going to go ahead and show you how to put those polishers in properly without overpressure. Once we get those footprints created, we're going to go ahead and show you exactly those quality edges. So how you can maintain those edges as well. Then we're going to take some time and actually do an evaluation of a time study. How you can do a time study so you can figure out exactly how much that machine can produce for you. Okay, well we're going to get started on taking some measurements on our tools here. Uh, we went ahead and set them out, so once again we'll go right, right through everything. So we've got a blind hole drill, our core bit, our finger bit, our Super Z, our power edge, our position one diamond, which is a segment of diamond, and then we've got continuous rim diamonds for position two, three, four, and five, and our two polish wheels here. We're going to go through exactly what diameters we want to capture off of this, what lengths we want to capture off of it, and how we're going to go ahead and put that information. So first off, we need our caliper. As you see, when we turn our caliper on, it is extremely important that we zero that out. So turn it out, zero. As we go here, we're going to go ahead and we're going to take that blind hole drill, and we're going to just verify what that diameter is. This should be 12 millimeter, so we'll put that diameter as 12 mil. We're also going to go ahead and capture that height. The height is going to be from the base of the cone to the very tip of that diamond. And we're sitting at about 80.3 on our core bit, 34 and change. So we're going to be all right just putting this to 35. And our height is at 69.5 for our finger bit, 21.7. And you want to check all the way around to see what your largest diameter is. And we'll go ahead and check to see what our depth is as well. 70.3. Now to our Super Z or that power edge. What I like to do is come up over the cross the top section of it just like this. And we'll see exactly how we're getting that dimension. We're at 39.4. And we can just kind of go around and see where our largest we're going to be sitting at. 79.4 is where I'm going to go ahead and put that measurement. As far as our tool height, it's going to start from the base just like we were on these other cones as well. So we, since we didn't put any spacers, we can go directly to that tool and measure that diamond out. So we're at 45.5 and we're going to keep rolling on the profile wheels. So inside our profile wheels, if you go ahead and you open up the box as we're setting them up, there is a paper that comes with it. That paper is going to go ahead and give us dimensions as far as our L1 which is going to be to the center of that profile, our L2, which is to the base of that profile, and then we're also going to have the radius, which is going to be half of the diameter of that tool. This, every single DM tool that comes for the profile is going to come with this set. I'm going to go ahead and we're going to ignore these for right now. We're going to take manual measurements. If you're utilizing different machines, every machine is going to have a little bit different information that you're going to upload versus the radius or a diameter. So right now we're going to concentrate. We need to get the diameters and we're going to get the length of the tool. So going first here, we're going to go ahead and we're going to check for our diameters because that larger the diameter we put in there, meaning the material that's leaving off of the next one. So if you put a diameter that's too small, that tool could remove too much material. So our biggest point is finding where that extra diamond is hanging out so that way we're making that the diameter so that way the next tool after that when we put the diameter on it's going to or the input the diameter is going to have the correct information let's do 66.5 and for this quick and easy we're just going to go ahead and we're going to take an overall di or overall height let's just do 42.5 now we're going to go ahead and we're going to check that tool height and we're going to go ahead and put that value as 42.1. We're going to find the center point or the L1 dimension 
which is going to be pretty much, if you look at them, we're going to be 42 or 4.4 here. 4.4 here is going to find our center point of that tool. So very, very important on these tools. They're going to have the same value from here and here. So we can go ahead and find that. So on to the next, 65.5. And we'll check the overall height, 42.09, so I'm going to do 42.1. We should see these values from all of these tools be very, very close on the tool height. We might have some diameter variations from one to the next, but we should see the tool height fairly constant from all. So once again, we're going to get that diameter, 65.7. And our tool height should be pretty close to 42.1, 42.08. So we're going to do 42.1 again. And again, if we have to make any minor adjustments, we'll do that on the machine after this. So once again, check the diameter. And 60, 65.5. And our overall tool height, we're sitting at. 42.06, so we're going to go ahead and use that same height as we had prior. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to do position 6. Position 6 diameter is 60.4, so put 60.4. We're going to go ahead, when we put that in the PC or the computer, we're going to increase that slightly so that way when we go ahead and we come into the material, we don't want to hit this too hard. If you go ahead and you hit this tool too hard in the very beginning, you can go ahead and put extra stress on it that's going to crack it and uh, possibly damage the final, dam or the final product. Uh, we also want to go ahead and get that tool height, which we're sitting at 52.4. Position 7, 60.5. And our overall tool height, 52.2. Okay, now we have all the data that we're going to go ahead and be able to go on to the next stage. We also want to understand as far as what information we're going to be taking from here and removal rates that we want to go ahead and set up. So as far as our uh, blind hole drill, that removal rate is going to be the depth that we set our programming to. So our overall height is what we want for this. The same thing for your core bit. We want our total height, our depth is going to be set by the program as well, and the finger bit and the power, Z, or the power edge, we're going to go ahead and do a little bit of an offset so that way that tool goes below the material as we're running. And then our profile sets, we're going to go ahead and we're going to create a footprint and how we're going to adjust that footprint on the go. So next step is going to be putting that information into the PC so that way we can do our programming. Right now we're going to be utilizing iCAM, so if you have any questions, please feel free to contact us.